Sometimes life throws you for a loop. Sometimes you get dragged down and you feel depressed. Well, today on Fresh Food Therapy, we're gonna chase away the blues with some fresh greens. We have four different greens for your pleasure. We're gonna prepare them quickly, easily, and deliciously for you and your family. Are you ready? So we're gonna start with the most simple and then we're gonna to move to the more complex of the greens. The first and the easiest is escarole. It's most closely related to chicory and to Belgian endive, but it's a leafy green with wavy edges that has a little bit of pepper and a little bit of bitterness to it, which doesn't sound particularly attractive, but I'm gonna tell you, when you saute it with a little bit of garlic, it becomes smoky and beautiful and slightly sweet. Are you ready? What we're gonna do is we're gonna start by shaving the garlic. And the way we do that is we cut the clove in half and then we very carefully cut very thin slices. And the reason why we're doing that is because we want the garlic to melt into the oil, leaving a beautiful essence, but without large pieces of garlic for the, for the dish. What we're going to do is we're gonna add a little bit of olive oil to the pan. And then we're going to coat the entire pan with the oil. And then we're gonna add the garlic. Now, because of the way this works, we have to be very quick, but luckily this is a very quick dish. You take the entire head and you slice into strips. We're gonna move the garlic around a little bit, and before it starts to brown, we're gonna add the escarole. It's just gonna take a few moments to actually saute, but what we're gonna do now is we're gonna just make sure that the leaves are coated with the oil and that the escarole is able to cook down evenly. And then we'll add a pinch of salt. Once the escarole is coated, go ahead and just add a pinch of salt to the entire dish. And as the escarole begins to cook down, you'll see that there are greens and, and light whites throughout. It's a beautiful vegetable to have as a side dish. Now the escarole is almost complete. What we're going to do is we're going to take it from the heat and plate it and give it a moment or two to rest before we serve it. What you will find is that although it is very, very simple to make and only requires a little bit of time, it's going to be a wonderful snack and a wonderful way to get some fiber and some vitamins into your diet. So the next green that we're gonna be going into is romaine lettuce, which is a little unusual if you're thinking about having a cooked green because most people see romaine lettuce as either the fixings for a Caesar salad or a lettuce that's good to have in a sandwich. Well, here's what I'm gonna tell you. Literally, once you try it like this, there's a very good chance you're gonna be having this quite frequently. So, all we have to do for this one, it's a little bit more complicated than the escarole, but not by much. We're gonna put the pan on, we're gonna add a little bit of olive oil to it, or vegetable oil. Either will work. And 
and then we're gonna add a little bit of garlic salt to the oil. Now this is where it gets fun. Literally all you have to do is cut off the ends and use the entire rest of the romaine. What we're gonna do is we're just gonna turn the lettuce to allow it to get coated with the oil and then we're gonna allow it to cook down slowly until it's tender. You wanna make sure that you've separated the leaves. You don't want them clumping like that one was. You do wanna cover it and allow the romaine to steam at the same time as it's sauteing. That will speed up the cooking process and end with a very, very supple, very tender and juicy piece of side vegetable. It's been about 12 minutes and now the romaine should be fully cooked and ready to serve. What we're gonna do is we're gonna open up the pot, let you take a look at what the inside holds and then we'll plate it and show you as you're gonna serve it. Now the romaine is done and it's ready to be served. And I'm going to tell you, when you get the first bite, you're gonna be really impressed at what your new way of making romaine is. If you'd like, you can serve this at a picnic or you can serve it with a family dinner with roasted corn and a little bit of chicken, but you're gonna find that romaine has taken on a whole new dimension with this dish. The next dish that we're gonna be going into is sauteed spinach with Tuscan grilled steaks. So the next dish that we're gonna make actually saved my life. I was studying at Grossmont Community College and I had contracted walking pneumonia and I didn't know any better and I didn't know that I had it. And when I finally went to the health department to find out why I was tired and having a hard time, they told me that I looked really pale and they told me, hold on one second, they did a blood panel and they found out that I had absolutely no iron left in my body. All of the iron that I had had been used to fight the walking pneumonia. So one of the things that they told me was, I hope you like steak and spinach because that's what you're gonna be eating every meal for the next week and a half. It was a way to replenish the iron in my body. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna teach you how to make a quick Tuscan grilled steak and then sauteed spinach. What we're gonna do is we're gonna take the steak first and we're going to put a little bit of the garlic compound butter that we've made in past episodes. We're going to lay it down and start it sauteing and put a little bit of fresh cracked black pepper over the top. While that is starting to cook, what we're gonna do is we're gonna clean and prep the spinach. And literally all you have to do for the spinach is cut some of the stems off. You can actually eat the stems if you wish. But in this case, I'm gonna trim some of the stems off to make it a little easier to eat. Now, the steak should be ready to turn. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna put a little bit more of the garlic compound butter over the other side and a pinch of salt. We're going to turn the steak and add a little bit of pepper and a little bit of salt. And while that is finishing up, we're actually going to take the shaved garlic that's left over from the first dish and we're gonna add a little bit of shaved shallots. Shallots are like a very, very mild onion that add a little bit of sweetness and a little bit of depth to the dish. And once the steak has gotten to our desired level of doneness, this is right about now medium rare. We're gonna put it to the side and then we're gonna use the spinach to
soak up all of the flavors, the oil and the garlic. And all we're gonna do is let it saute down. In the side of the dish, we're gonna move the spinach to the side and we're gonna add a little bit of the shallots and a little bit of the garlic. We're gonna to continue to just stir the spinach to let it cook down a little bit. It should be relatively quick. And in just a moment, it should be ready and we'll be able to plate it with the steak. As soon as the spinach is done, you can plate it and now you have Tuscan grilled steak with sauteed spinach with shallots and garlic. We're going to make the next dish, which is one of the Italian tradition's greatest feats, Italian sausage and rapini together. So this dish has a little bit of history, not only far back into the Italian tradition of cooking, but also for me personally. I learned how to make rapini and Italian sausage about six years ago. And I made a big batch and I brought it into work at Enoteca Adriano. And all of a sudden, I, my coworkers came and said, hey, what's that? I said, I made Italian sausage and rapini. Would you like a little taste? They're like, yeah. I came back and my entire dinner was gone. I'm gonna tell you that teaching you how to make this dish could very well be the downfall of your culinary training because you may not wanna go any further after you taste this. What a time to be alive. They actually have some places now that are putting the rapini into sausage so that all you have to do is grill the sausage and you get it all together. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna take fresh rapini or broccoli rabe as it's called. It's related to turnips. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna blanch it in boiling water and then we're gonna saute it with a little bit of garlic and then we're gonna put it on the side with the sausages and serve it just like that. A little bit of crusty bread on the side makes for a beautiful meal. Are you ready? The water is now boiling and what we're going to do next is we're gonna trim the rapini and then we're gonna blanch it by just putting it into the boiling water and letting it steam and boil for just a moment too. It will actually soften and make it easier to saute later. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna just trim the stems a little bit Almost all of the rapini is able to be consumed. We're just going to trim it a little bit so that it fits easier into the pot. And then we're gonna loosen up the pieces. And it will only need a few moments, I would say no more than five or six to blanch properly. So now that the rapini has blanched for about four or five minutes, we're gonna take it off and we're gonna put the fry pan onto the heat right away and add a little bit of olive oil. Into the oil as it's heating up, we're gonna put a little bit of fresh garlic salt, a little bit of cracked pepper, And we're gonna take the rest of the shaved garlic that we have left over. And once that comes up to temperature, we're going to take the rapini and we're gonna to toss it in. We just need to saute it to the point where the flavors and the spices are melded well with the vegetable. In about four or five minutes, it should be ready to plate, and then we'll be ready to show you what it looks like. We're ready to plate the rapini, and I'm gonna tell you, it smells wonderful. So we're gonna take it away from the heat, and then, attempting to be very cleanly, place it on the plate with the sausage. 
what we're left with is a beautiful plate ready for your enjoyment with Italian sausage rapini and some crusty bread. So we started off the episode with the idea of chasing away the blues with greens. And I'm gonna tell you that right now with these four plates in front of me, I'm feeling pretty happy. I've got to start a little bit of fresh escarole, a little bit of fresh romaine sauteed, a little bit of fresh spinach with shallots and garlic, and a little bit of Tuscan grilled steak. And then we have rapini with Italian sausage and crusty bread. It's important for me to give a little shout out to the team at Specialty Produce. All of the fresh produce today we got from Specialty Produce and I'm gonna tell you what a wonderful team and what a great product. We'll be using their produce again soon and I always feel great whenever I go there. It's really a way to lift your spirits. The portion cost for today's dishes are about 78 cents per portion for the escarole, about the same for the romaine. For the Tuscan grilled steak and spinach, you're looking at about $3.58 per portion. And then you're looking at, for the Italian sausage, rapini, and crusty bread, about $4.17 a portion. Not very expensive, but wow, will it improve your, your mood and make you feel better. All of them are rich in vitamins and minerals and will really satisfy your taste buds. Thank you for tuning in to Fresh Food Therapy. It was a pleasure cooking for you again, and we'll see you really soon.